Hey guys, my name is Toby and welcome back to another very exciting Photoshop tutorial where today we're going to be taking a look at how to use a couple of really simple tools to remove scratches, blemishes, spots and generally other things that you don't really want in a portrait. So the way we're going to do that is by using, uh, as I mentioned, a couple of different tools. The first of which we're going to look at is the clone stamp tool, which is this icon just here. Or you can hit S on your keyboard. And I do recommend you learn the keyboard shortcuts for the tools that we're going to mention today because you're going to be using these a lot. Uh, so let's try and get rid of this red mark on his forehead first of all. Now, this might just look a little bit like the paintbrush to begin with, but it is a little bit different. As it might kind of give away by the name, it's a clone stamp. So what it will do is it basically will copy pixels from one place and put them in another. Uh, so to give you kind of an idea of what you can do with this, we could put his another copy of his eye on his forehead. Why not? Um, and before you can use this tool, you have to specify where you want to kind of start copying from. So you need to set a source point. Um, and you do that by holding down Alt or Option on the Mac, and you'll get a cursor that looks a little bit like this. And then you can click his eye. And now you can start painting that in. And we can give him another eye. Now, if you let go, it's going to remember that source point, so you actually can just kind of continue from where you left off. And until you resample, you can pretty much just paint and it's always going to line up and work and that's all good. Now, you may notice as well that when I'm actually painting, if you look at the original eye, uh, you're going to see there's a little white cross that's kind of moving um, with my brush. And that's just telling you exactly where on the picture it is you're currently copying from. So because this eye is now part of our picture, if I start to move up, it's going to paint in another eye up here, which is something to be aware of when you're cloning. You can end up putting multiple copies of the same thing in accidentally sometimes, which isn't always great. Um, in this instance, it's not something we really want to do, but um, pretty much that is the clone stamp tool. It's uh, a very useful little tool and it allows us to get rid of things like this quite easily. So what we need to do is when you're doing blemish removal, the key trick is to sample from something very close to the area that you're trying to get rid of. It's no good me coming over here, sampling these pixels and then painting it over that because that's not worked. That doesn't look like it fits at all because the skin is the wrong color. It's got, it's lit differently. It's got the wrong tones. It's just, it doesn't look right. You know, you might have slightly different depths of field. I mean, you can see just from here that this part of his head is completely out of focus or in this part isn't. So you need to take that kind of thing into consideration as well. But you need to find an area that looks like it'll be pretty good as a clone source uh, to paste over this little uh, blemish here. And I think something like around here is pretty good. So if I hold down Alt, I'm going to click to set our source point, And I'm just going to paint over that. And that's pretty much that. I mean, if you hadn't seen me do that, you probably wouldn't be able to tell that that's been airbrushed. Now, because you've got to be really careful with your details, I think, in stuff like this. To me, that doesn't look quite right. And there is a slightly better tool that will do the same job. Now, this isn't to say that the clone stamp isn't a valid tool, because there are situations where you will need the clone stamp, or the clone stamp might be a better tool to use. Uh, but for something like this, uh, as I mentioned, you could obviously do it with the clone stamp, but there's one that is a little bit more clever, and that is the healing brush which is this icon here. It's the little plaster or band-aid if you're in America. Um, and this works more or less the same way. You still have to hold Alt or Option to kind of set a source point. But whereas the clone stamp literally will take one set of pixels and move them to somewhere else exactly, this tool, um, it kind of looks for texture is the best way I can explain it. It analyzes what you're painting over and will attempt to remove it and then blend whatever it is you're copying in. So you don't have to necessarily pick from something really close to the source. Uh, it does sometimes help, but we could in theory kind of come over here with this one and kind of start to paint this in. And you're gonna notice that that doesn't look very good at the moment. But once I let go of this brush, it's gonna blend that in really, really nicely. And it's just gonna make it fit and you'd never know it was there. Uh, and it's, a brilliant little tool. So we can take another one, we can get rid of this, and it's just going to sort it. It's going to take kind of the color and the lightness values from the areas around where you paint and blend that all in really, really nicely. Um, 
so you don't have to worry too much about being careful from your source points. You just have to kind of find an area of clean skin and you can just kind of keep using that same area. You don't have to... Um, it's a just it's slightly better. It works a little bit more intelligently and it's a little bit quicker to do sometimes. So the healing brush is awesome. Now, where the healing brush kind of falls down is let's say we're trying to do something along the edge of his glasses here. And what we have here is a really contrasty edge which just isn't going to quite work as well as we like. So let's say we're going to sample from here and we're going to try and we're just going to overlap this a little bit on purpose. So you're going to see what this can do. And it will it has problems with contrast because it's looking at the areas around where you're painting. It's going to go, well, the area up here is really dark, so it needs to blend with that. And it's going to cause this awful kind of muddy look. And, you know, the same thing would happen if I was going off the edge of his face. Or if you're dealing with anything with like an edge, it can really mess it up. So that's one where you might want to use the clone stamp because the clone stamp doesn't try to be too smart, if that makes sense. It will just kind of do what you tell it to, rather than relying on Photoshop to make some intelligent decisions, quote unquote. Um, but generally speaking, the healing brush is a better tool for general purpose stuff. It's just occasionally you're going to come up against something like, you know, maybe you're going around the edge of a nose or something like that, or lips, or something with an edge or a contrast change or different big changes of colour. Um, and the, the healing brush is just going to get it wrong. Now, the one tool that I haven't talked about yet is kind of the... It, when they added this to Photoshop, it was amazing. Um, and frankly, it still is. And this is the tool out of the three that we're going to mention that I use the most. Uh, and that is the spot healing brush. So you have the healing brush and the spot healing brush. And they more or less do the same thing, um, except that... Where, with, whereas with the healing brush and the clone stamp tool, you have to hold alt, specify a source point, the spot healing brush, you can literally, if I just make this a little bit bigger using the square bracket keys, you just go, right, I don't like that. That mark there? Yeah, I don't like that. And it, it will just get rid of stuff. It's great. And you can go kind of as detailed as you want. You can kind of get rid of this, that, and every, anything else. And it's great. It What it's basically doing is you don't have to pick a source point. It's going to kind of analyze the picture, analyze the area you're kind of painting over and just automatically get rid of stuff. And, you know, when people say, oh, airbrushing is really difficult. No, it's not. This is it. This is this is airbrushing. You literally just go, yeah, get rid of that. Cool. Next. And you just paint and highlight things you don't want and it will sort it. Um, you can even go to the extent of coming into sort of his eye here, make our brush quite a lot smaller, and just very carefully kind of go over some of these lines uh, to get rid of uh, some bloodshot eyes. And just like that, done. You know, it is as simple as it looks. Um, and it's brilliant, but it does have a couple of drawbacks. Um, it does sometimes suffer with edges, uh, like we mentioned. So it's kind of got the same problem as the healing brush because it's trying to be clever. Sometimes when you do an edge, it will mess it up massively. Um, not always. Uh, sometimes it just won't get something. Like you'll try to remove something and it will just kind of get it wrong. Um, and then you, what you might need to do is kind of edit, undo, and maybe try going the other way and just have another go at it. What I sometimes find helps, if you kind of keep doing an, uh, a change and every single time it's kind of getting it pretty much the same and still wrong. Um, sometimes if you're drawing top to bottom, let's say, and it's getting it wrong, try going bottom to top because it will do the calculation differently kind of behind the scenes and it will give you a, a slightly different result that might work better. Um, sometimes you can just sit there and try this 10 or 15 times and then go, you know what, I'm just going to use the regular healing brush or the clone stamp. And that's kind of, you know, the sort of thing that happens. The other problem you come up against is that so hopefully I can kind of demo this here. Um, sometimes when it's trying to be clever, it will actually mess up the existing skin texture. So you might find that while there is a certain skin texture, it's going to smooth everything out or it's going to do something like this. And that's where the normal healing brush um, is either a better option or sometimes if you've done this and you can't go back because you've not edited this in a sort of workflow-friendly way... Um, 
if you take the normal healing brush, because the way I like to think of the healing brush is it's like a way of copying texture. So we can say, okay, this bit here, let's just paint that over that. And then you're going to get something that's going to resemble the existing texture. And you can kind of just fill that in and sort it all out. Um, one thing I will mention, um, because the clone stamp and the healing brush do have this option which you can change. So what you may have noticed is that, uh, if you recall, when I was using the clone stamp, the, um, if I sample his eye again, let's say, the little white cross will kind of stay with the brush, um, and it's going to move and be aligned to the brush. Now, what I could do is if I untick this little box that says aligned, if I sample his eye, and I can start to paint that, if I let go, it will then resample from his eye. So for the clone stamp, this generally isn't the most useful thing you can do. Uh, the healing brush, on the other hand, I actually prefer to have it, uh, so I'm gonna put that back on, because aligned is generally what you'd want with the clone stamp. The healing brush, I have this unaligned, and the reason is that when you're doing this sort of work, you can go, right, that, this area here is a nice kind of clear patch of skin. So I'm going to pick a sample point in there and then I'm just going to paint that and it's going to use that area. And then I can go over here and I can paint that. It's going to use the same area. So you don't have to worry about, um, so if I'd used this area to do there and then I come over here, um, you might accidentally start painting his nose in. And it's like, if I haven't had that aligned, um, can start there, go there, go there, and it's not going to move the source point with the brush, basically. Hopefully that makes sense, but with the healing brush, sometimes it's nice to just go, right, this is a nice area, this is going to be kind of the area I'm going to take all of my sampling from, and then you can just kind of start to click and not have to think about it too much. Um, and the only other thing I will say, as a sort of closing statement for any kind of airbrushing like this, is that less is more. Uh, I mean, let's think, how how far have we gone with this? I, see, there's very few things in... This is probably more than I'd actually normally do to a photo like this. Um, you know, because I've been taking out things that probably don't need to be taken out. But you don't want to overdo it. What you don't want to do is ruin the natural existing skin texture texture that exists. Because then you'll end up with somebody who looks photoshopped. And that's where a lot of people go wrong with airbrushing and skin smoothing and this sort of thing. You don't want to be going in here and literally taking out every single pore and every single teeny tiny ridiculous imperfection. I mean, if I was going to edit this image, let's let's do it. Why not? It's going to take seconds. So I'm going to go spot healing tool, uh, which is this one. And I'm going to get rid of that. That is a red mark there that I can see. There's one there. A couple on his nose, that one needs to go, uh, a red mark there, I'm really just looking for anything that's kind of red and raised, I'd probably do his eye again, uh, so really quickly we're just going to do this, Make brush smaller, that one, that one, there we go, um, and then possibly that freckle just because it's in a strange place. And that's it. Done. That is as much as I'd really do to that photo. And then I might come up and take out some stray hairs, but that would take a little bit longer to do. But you kind of get the point. Um, so it is as quick as that to professionally airbrush a picture. You don't need to do any more than that. And that is where so many people go wrong when they're trying to do this kind of thing, particularly when you first start out. Um, and, you know, as you saw in this instance, I could do this all with the spot healing brush in seconds. The healing brush is kind of more useful when you need to, when Photoshop's not going to get it right and you want to specify exactly what skin text you want to use. Uh, and the clone stamp is kind of the fallback when all the other brushes kind of just can't, aren't up to it. Or if you're dealing with an edge, sometimes that's the better option. Uh, but I think that is just about going to do it. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. My name is Toby and we'll see you next time.